Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today's video is going to be a fall haul. Um, I got some new pickups related more towards the fall time. Most of the items are vintage pickups, but I got a couple of other special pieces to show you guys. So it should be some good fun. Before we get into the video, I wanted to let you guys know that this video is indeed sponsored by Karma, a app and Google Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. And don't forget to use my affiliate link in the description below. It'll be the first link. Viewers of the channel will know that I only do sponsored content with brands or products I actually use and believe in. And Karma has been a long time partner of the channel. And one of the items in this video is actually a special pair of Converse that I'll talk about in a little bit, but I was able to get them on discount because I was notified of a price drop through Karma. And with Black Friday right around the corner, Karma is gonna be an excellent tool to use to save money on all your shopping. So for those of you who don't already have Karma installed, stick around for a minute and I'm gonna run through a quick tutorial on how to download it and start using it for yourself. To download and start using Karma for yourself, click the first link in the description and that'll bring you to the Karma website where you can sign up and download the Chrome extension. It's a free extension, so you just click the Add to Chrome button. It's super simple. And then you can start shopping on all of your favorite retailers. Here I found a couple of really nice items on Farfetch. When you want to save an item, you click the little floating Karma button on the side of your browser. Select your size. Select if you'd like to be notified of a specific price change or of any price change. And then finally, if you're going to save it to a list. Currently, I'm working on my fall winter list because some items are seasonal. When any of your saved items do go on sale, you'll get a notification through email or through the Karma app. This is my fall winter list I'm currently organizing, so feel free to take some inspiration from it for your own list. Another cool feature Karma has is its coupon code scanner. So when you're checking out, Karma will let you know if they found any coupon codes to help you save even more money on your order. That's going to be super useful going into Black Friday as more deals become available. Sometimes you'll get cash back on your order as well, so it's an excellent and free service I highly recommend you take advantage of. If you go to the first link in the video description, you'll find my affiliate link. That'll take you directly to the Karma website. That URL is linked to my YouTube channel, so when you click it, it supports me directly. Once again, huge thank you to Karma for sponsoring the video, and let's get into the fall haul. Also, one more quick thing I want to include. I am going to be doing a closet sale on newrodeo.us pretty soon. Um, it's not like a big drop or anything. It's just a few of my more special items um, that I've had for a while, but realize they don't really fit me or I don't really wear them as much. So I'm going to be loading those onto the website. I'll have the drop date listed right here for when the website goes live. Also, don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it and you want to see more content. Share the video with a friend and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'm going to keep the community growing and stuff. Uh, Discord, all that stuff will be linked down below. So yeah, let's get into the fall haul finally. A few months ago, I made this video right here. I'll have a little thumbnail. And I featured a denim jacket made by Prot. Um, his brand is Proletary Art. At the time, I didn't really know much about him, um, but that denim jacket that I showcased in the video is like the third one I think he ever made under his own label. Um, and because it was too small, I ended up letting the jacket go. And since then, Prot's blown up, had amazing success. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen um, at least one of his pieces on your Explore page or on some celebrities and whatnot. After I made that video, Prot actually reached out to me. Um, he sent me a DM on Instagram and he offered to make me a custom piece since I was one of his early supporters and I bought a jacket that wasn't necessarily custom made for me. Um, he felt bad that it didn't fit right and all that. And so yeah, he offered to make me a custom one. And a couple months later, I now have my own one of one custom piece by Proletary Art. This is the jacket right here in all of its glory. Um, it's such an amazing piece. You guys can tell right off the bat that so much love and care and attention has gone into the creation of this piece. If you're familiar with the Boro or Sashiko stitching methods and all the repairing methods, then you'll know how much time goes into creating something like this. Every little detail about it is completely intentional, um, down from like the rips and the layering of the fabric and all the stitching going across. And it's a very intense process. And I think he, I forget exactly how many hours it takes him to make each jacket, something around like 30 hours, I believe it was. This jacket right here is a reconstructed vintage reproduction Levi's type one denim jacket. Type one denim jackets will have the pocket up front and then the knife pleats on the chest. 
Um, and then also the back buckle right there for the adjustable uh, torso. I wanted Prot to take complete creative control over the whole process and some of the design choices. I told him I wanted a black jacket and everything else is under his control. Thankfully he sent over some pictures kind of detailing the process um, of how he made the jacket, how he reconstructed the jacket. So first he acquired a vintage reproduction Levi's Type 1, took it apart, dyed it, rewashed it, um, and then did the signature Boro stitching, the Sayashiko stitching, I believe, on every single panel. Um, did some distressing, did some layering with different fabrics. You guys can see um, all the different fabric layering going on. He told me that he embellished the pocket with a antique Indian bead embroidered fabric. Um, and one little piece of it had this beautiful flower with these little gemstones on it. And so he decided to include that on the front pocket, which I think is such a nice detail. And to run over some of the details about Pratt's history, since there isn't a lot of info out there, um, him and I talked for a while, he kind of gave me a breakdown of his history. Um, he was the chief designer from 2010 to 2020 at Capital Country. I'm sure many of you guys know Capital. They have a sort of like a subdivision brand called Capital Country, which is their more high-end label. Lots of work that has to be done by hand, um, such as this Capital Country Boro denim jacket right here. This was actually made by Pratt, and he was brought on board during the first collaboration with Louis Vuitton, I believe it was. And after that point, he stuck around as the chief designer at Capital Country. And then he recently retired um, about a year ago to start his own label, um, which is Proletta Re-Art. His goal is to work on one of one pieces because um, that was always his passion and Capital is obviously a large brand. Everything has to be mass produced. Um, so he felt like he didn't really have the special love and care and attention of a one of one garment that you'd normally get um, with a boro treated item. All of Prod's pieces are made entirely from upcycled materials um, using vintage garments, vintage fabrics like the Indian embroidered bead fabric right there, which kind of further pushes the uniqueness of each garment. This jacket is going to stay in the collection for eternity. Um, he actually numbers each of his items. This is serial number 69, handmade by Pratt. And then on the inside, he hand wrote the date that the jacket was finished, which is October 2nd. And then he wrote for Owen Hyatt by Pratt. Love that little detail. Um, and I believe if I <laughs> have my information correct, I believe number 68 is owned by 21 Savage and number 70 is owned by ASAP Rocky. So it's kind of cool to be right in the middle of those two guys. Like I mentioned, I let him take the full kind of creative control over what the jacket looks like. Um, I just told him I wanted a black jacket, so we got the black denim. Um, and then lots of subtle hints of color you guys will see on the sleeve. There's little hints of blue fabric peeking out, um, purple thread. There's some red bandana peeking out on the yoke. You can stare at this jacket for hours and still find new details about it. Um, and it's such a beautiful piece. Hopefully the B-roll does it justice. Um, but it fits amazing, like I mentioned. And yeah, I'm just really stoked to have this jacket in the collection. So yeah, huge thank you to Prop for wanting to do something for me. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for the future for him. He's blown up recently. Done ton he's done tons of collaborations and releases. Um, so if you're interested in commissioning an item from him, I'll have his socials linked everywhere, linked on the screen, linked down below. So give him a message. So yeah, thank you, Pratt. Hopefully we can work together in the future again. The next item I want to talk about, um, that I'll kind of glance over sort of quickly, is this pair of Converse right here. Um, you guys will know that I'm more of a boot guy. I have tons of boots. Um, this is one of the only sneakers I actually own. And these are a made in Japan pair of the Converse Chuck Taylor All-Stars. I'm still in the hunt for a all white pair, um, but I actually think Converse are one of the few silhouettes that I look all right in, in terms of sneakers. And yeah, these have just been great beaters for me. Um, in case you're wondering, from what I could gather research-wise about the made in Japan Converse, um, the major differences, or I guess it'd be minor differences really, is the back tab is different. It's got a white and black back tab that says All Star Made in Japan. And the actual materials themselves are supposed to be higher quality than the Made in USA or Made in Boston pairs. I wish I had another pair of Converse to kind of compare directly um, how the material quality and all that stuff is. And also the build quality is supposed to be better as well. Um, yeah, I've just been beating these like crazy. So far they've held up great. Um, like I mentioned, I am on the hunt for a white pair as well, but they're actually pretty hard to find. I believe this was part of an anniversary release, um, which came out a couple of years ago, so there might be a few pairs floating around here and there. They are a little bit more expensive than the Made in USA pairs, but 
yeah, maybe the quality is a little bit better. I think they're really cool though. So yeah, that's it for the Converse. So moving on to a couple of pickups, I actually got two hoodies sent over from Jay, the owner of Twofold Vintage, which I believe is in Sacramento, California. He runs a really cool vintage curated page on Instagram. Um, he uploads like 200 items a week, really great prices, awesome selection. And he sent over two hoodies, like I mentioned, and this first one is a 1950s heather gray hoodie. Unfortunately, there's no tag on the inside, so I don't know what the actual make is. This one fits surprisingly well, considering how most hoodies from this era fit tiny, like absolutely tiny. This one actually has a decent fit. Um, it fits probably like a true medium, slightly roomy large, I'd say. Um, and like all hoodies from this era, the actual hood itself is tiny. It has this ribbed collar, sort of like on the cuffs and on the bottom hem. Um, this has got some ribbing on it, which is really interesting. I don't have any Heather Gray hoodies right now, so this is a great addition to the wardrobe, um, as I think it's like a really great layering piece, especially. And it's a really nice weight too. Um, it's not too beat up. There are a couple holes here and there on the uh, shoulder seam, there's a hole. And then on the sleeves, they've started to split a little bit, which I don't mind at all. And there's just some like subtle staining going on, but that's to be expected with a 1950s hoodie. This thing is super cozy. I've been wearing it a lot since I got it in. And the other hoodie you sent over sort of like completes my trifecta of Russell hoodies. Um, you guys know that I'm a big Russell hoodie fan. I've got my black one and I got my brown one that I wear all the time. And I've been after a white one for so long. Hopefully the exposure is all right. Um, but he sent over a white Russell and it fits amazing. This one's actually tagged to size large, but it fits probably the largest out of all the other ones. Um, maybe one year the sizing was a little bit different. Yeah, I'm so stoked to finally add a white Russell to the collection. It's just got some subtle staining going on. It's got a little stain on the pocket right there um, and just some minor discoloration here and there. But for a white hoodie from the 90s, it's in great condition. Blank Russells can cost a pretty penny for sure. So I'm glad that Jay sent this one over, sort of completed my trifecta. So yeah, huge thank you to Jay. I'll have his socials and everything linked down below and on the screen. And let's move on to the next item. So before we get into some of my own vintage acquisitions, I want to talk about a pair of um, probably actually one of my favorite pairs of jeans I own right now. Um, you guys know I'm a sucker for vintage Levi's. And my friends from Blind Date um, sent over this beautiful pair right here. Um, I don't know why, but I've just been loving white jeans recently. I have a few pairs. So I probably need to get rid of one or two. Because I think I'm up to four now, which is just <laughs> way too many. Um, this one is a pair of uh, vintage Levi's 501s. Um, waist 30 length. 36 but definitely doesn't fit like a 36 length um, by any means and this is a I believe it's a bleached pair of blue Levi's because the stitching is gold and the stitching around the button fly is sort of like a navy bluish purple which tells me that these used to be um, like a dark blue denim and they've just been bleached a ton over time but yeah I've been a huge supporter of blind date for a while um, a large portion of my vintage collection is from Blind Date. Um, and yeah, I love those guys. They have amazing drops, really well curated selection. One characteristic I love about white Levi's is that they show um, the amount of wear that you've put into them so quickly. Um, I got these, I think about a month ago now, and they almost haven't come off. So I don't know what stains were existing before I got them and which stains I've put in myself because I, I just do everything in these jeans. Yeah, one interesting detail that you might have caught is that there's no belt loops on this pair. For some reason, one of the previous owners took off the belt loops. So I'll probably have some belt loops sewn on myself. There is just this, this one back one, um, but I might just have like a donor pair of Levi's. I don't know, maybe have an extra pair or something. I'll just take some belt loops off of them and put them onto these. Maybe I'll do it with like a brown pair or a black pair if I wanted a little extra flair. But um, yeah, I do need some, I do need belt loops on these because I've noticed that I don't like to carry my keychain in my hand and always clip it onto my belt loop. Plus I like to wear a belt all the time. Um, so yeah, I find myself like always reaching for it. In terms of the fit, um, since this is a vintage pair of Levi's, they fit a lot smaller than the tagged size. Like I mentioned earlier, these are tagged to 30 by 36. I'd say it fits like a true, maybe like 28, 29, and then lengthwise maybe like a 33, which is like my ideal size. You guys will see 
in the on body, how well these fit me. Yeah, they have a beautiful released hem, tons of stains all over. There's a really nice patch on the side of the left leg right there, like a tonal patch, which I think is really cool. Back pocket is scuffed up for sure. Um, and yeah, I just love the, the wear and tear that's been put into these and I'm looking forward to wearing them more often. Um, yeah, can't get enough white Levi's. <laughs> Actually, I'm probably done with white Levi's. I need to start getting rid of some pairs. So yeah, huge thank you to Blind Date. I'll have all the socials linked down below. Gotta support the friends that do vintage curation really well. We're down to the final three pickups. It's two pairs of trousers and then a t-shirt or I guess like a tank top. I guess I'll talk about this first. Um, I actually got this when I was in Dallas a little over a month ago, maybe like a month and a half ago. Um, and this is a vintage Morrissey tee. I've had a hard time dating this one just because this uh, graphic has been used a couple of times by different manufacturers. Like I know there are some with Hanes tags um, that look a little bit newer, but this one is on a really old jockey tag. So I've had a really hard time dating this piece. Um, but this one actually has been turned into a tank top vest type situation with some re really extended uh, sleeve openings. You guys will see that like runs almost down to the bottom of the hem and it's got this really cool like hand stitched element going on right there which I think is a nice subtle detail. Um, but yeah, I've actually worn this quite a bit and I think it looks good either obviously just rocking it on its own or sometimes layering it with a thermal long sleeve which I've been doing a lot recently. Um, but yeah, the wear on this is beautiful. The neck is starting to get some nice subtle holes in there. Um, there's one hole in the back of the neck and the print has just faded beautifully over time. The reason why the bottom hem has a double stitch is because I actually took this to my tailor recently um, to get it shortened because it fit like a dress. It probably had this much more length thrown on it. I like all my t-shirts to fit at a 26 length. Um, so whenever I bring her t-shirts, I do, like she knows the deal. She knows that I want every single one at a 26 length. I think I've done that with probably like half the t-shirts I own right now. Um, I just had them all cropped to a 26. So that's why it has a double stitched hem. Um, it was single stitch before. So moving on to the next piece, this is a vintage pair of World War II US Army HBT fatigues and these are in fantastic condition considering how old they are. It has just the right amount of wear for my taste. Um, these are constructed with a cotton herringbone material like most uh, fatigue garments from this era. And the herringbone fabric you'll see has this subtle pinstripe effect going on. It's like a tonal pinstripe. Might be hard to see but it's alternating um, weave patterns. Some will go diagonally up, some will go diagonally down. And the overall fit of these is extremely baggy. You guys will see in the on body. Um, and normally I don't think baggy trousers look good on me, except I think these actually have a really flattering fit. But to run over some of the smaller details, there is like a little patch right here with more herringbone fabric, except it was patched going perpendicular, which I think is kind of cool. Um, a couple of small repaired holes here and there. This has also been patched. It's kind of hard to see, but this fabric behind it is way more stiff than the original herringbone, so I'll probably have to go in there and de-stitch it and then put in a different fabric just because it fits kind of weird with like this like stiff cardboard type material behind it. Um, but yeah, there's some like sort of like cuts going across that have been patched up. One bigger knee blowout that's been patched as well with more herringbone. And then one of my favorite details is the signature stamp right there. This one says Hall. Um, and a lot of soldiers would put their name on the garments as sort of like their signature, like their name tag. Um, and yeah, it's really cool to see that detail right there. Also to see it on the inside of one of the legs. It's such like an unusual spot for that. I also do have a pair of HBT cargo fatigues that didn't fit me unfortunately. So those are going to be part of the closet sale that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So the last item is something I've been on the hunt for for a long time is a pair of leather pants or leather jeans, I guess. These are a pair of made in Boston vintage Vanson motorcycle jeans. These pants in particular aren't too hard to find, but the difficulty behind buying a pair of vintage um, leather pants is the sizing. These are tagged to size 30, but because of the different levels of wear put in over time, the leather will stretch. So a 30 could fit a little bit bigger. It could fit a little bit smaller. Um, so it's important to check the measurements always when you're buying leather pants. I think over the past like three or four years, I've bought like three or four pairs of these pants. 
Um, they've just never fit right, but I finally hit the mark and I got kind of sort of like my dream pair, I guess, because they fit absolutely perfect. I forget if I said these are five pocket or not. Um, these are actually four pocket. It doesn't have the little coin pouch pocket. Actually, it would be on this, this side right here. Um, but it's got two pockets up front and then two back pockets right there. And it's got your standard sort of like closure. It's got a button and then a zipper. And the actual fit is sort of like a slim straight, I guess. Probably comparable to like a Levi's 505. And these are constructed with a super thick calfskin leather. Um, I think that's another difficulty behind buying vintage leather pants, especially buying them online, is that you can't feel the leather texture. You can't see how it shines in different lighting. Um, this is exactly what I was after in terms of leather pants. It's the perfect weight. It's extremely, extremely thick and heavy. Um, and it's not too shiny. It's not like that shiny, pleathery look. These do just have like a raw hem, um, which I believe is intended so you could shorten them to your desired length, but they actually fit perfect at their original length. And these do have a cotton lining on the inside, which makes them even thicker. Um, you kind of need a lining when it comes to a lot of leather garments because having that like suede rub against your skin wouldn't be that comfortable over time. I think leather pants can be kind of unusual to a lot of people. Um, however, I'm a huge fan. I think they look great. Additionally, I'll finally be picking up my motorcycle, hopefully soon, um, assuming the next Somar drop goes well. Um, so these are gonna be perfect for riding. That's gonna do it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you enjoyed it, drop a like down below, share the video with a friend, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys have any ideas for what you wanna see in future content, let me know. Um, but I believe either maybe the next video or the video after that will be a Somar Drop showcase video, which is super exciting. Um, that's gonna be coming up very soon. Maybe look on the Instagram page to see when the drop date is. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.